week on the Glass Cannon Podcast. You walk down this long hallway, and what do you see? You see a <laughs> slight woman, and she turns around and bows. Oh, please, there is no need to kneel. Stand up. Who are you? My name is Asta. She is alone. We all felt this way. We were all alone once. I say we, I say we trust her. I'm only searching for answers. We are searching for answers as well. But there is a matter, pressing matter. We must get to the library. Would you like to accompany us? We have research to do. We'll catch you up on the way. Oh, you still have the barcrypt from before. Well, this is good. With this, you could commune with the library tree. Uh, The tree has knowledge that goes back farther than us all. In a tome of ancient elven lore, you find a short passage mentioning the defeat and imprisonment of a slender, lurking creature of shadows. You are a couple blocks from Minotaur's mansion, and it's very, very quiet. And there is a, like, alleyway between two buildings that leads to, like, another street. And the way the moonlight is coming in, you see a tall, slender figure casting a long shadow down the alleyway. Talitha is going to start slowly perching and on the hilt of her rapier. And the second you step into the alleyway, it just like steps to the side and its shadow goes away. Run after it. You get to the end of the alley. Seconds later, no one there. Perhaps. It's here. It's here. He's watching. It's watching. On the ground, right outside the door to your room, is something carved onto the floor. It looks like halfway between a five-pointed star and like an elongated stick figure. (laughs) The adventure continues now. Welcome to the Glass Cannon Podcast. I'm your host, Troy LaValle. As you know, we have three uh, amazing sponsors for this show. We have Demiplane, who's providing uh, all of the the character sheets and and character tools that we use uh, through their Pathfinder 2E Nexus. We have Foundry VTT, which has completely changed the way we play the game, uh, both with maps and the way that I, as a GM, am able to interact with the game has made my life infinitely easier. And of course, uh, Norse Foundry, the official dice sponsor uh, of the Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2. Now, you're watching this from the future, in the future, from the past. We're recording this in the past. You're watching it in the future. So odds are the new sets of dice that we have that have come out are already available. They're already available for you to purchase. You probably have several sets at home because you're rich. (laughs) <laughs> Gotta collect them all. Because you did so well in life. You worked really hard and you made a lot of money. Um, but here, uh, we are just getting samples in to look at. And so I've had the samples for a couple of weeks and I brought them in um, for the players. And some of them were, were still tweaking, but I we had dice. I didn't want to get rid of them. So like skids, his are going to change and whatnot. Um, 
But uh, what do you say, Matthew? You had a, for about five <laughs> minutes before something happened? I would say about 90 seconds. 90 seconds. <laughs> it was beautiful. Mind you, these beautiful are expensive dice. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're very, very expensive. Individually, they're expensive. As a set, forget about it. It's a, these are luxury items. But you're rich, so you can afford them. But you're rich, so you're not worried about it. However, Matthew <laughs> is a playwright. <laughs> he can't afford nice things like good dice. <laughs> <laughs> he gets one set every 10 years and they're given to him. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew, I give you a, a D20 and a D6. They are quite beautiful. The, the upcoming you. Matthew Capitacasa set. Were, were quite beautiful. <laughs> Walk us through what happened in that, in that brief 90 seconds, the last 90 seconds. Give us a play you by happy. play. You handed them to me. I admired them. I took them out of the little protective bags. <laughs> Kate and I were looking at each other's. She took it. She looked at it. Approved. I approved. I put it into this very nice dice tray I have, and it's a little protective little, you know, corridor right here. And then Joe gets his, <laughs> opens up his, up and pulls his. This is back ridiculous. Out. <laughs> and Kate goes, "Hey, can I see that?" And Joe, instead of handing it to her like a normal person, chucks it. <laughs> it hits. Of all the places it could hit, it hits my die <laughs> in its protective corridor <laughs> and chips it. <laughs> I imagine Joe's die was destroyed in the process. No, it seems fine. Perfectly fine. <laughs> I almost demanded that we trade, but then I remembered he'd already touched it and it was cursed. Yeah, now it's cursed. Just walk us through this, Joe. You know that you're not supposed to throw these dice. <laughs> You're not supposed so to make I, contact I, with each other. They're like other. heavy gemstone dice. They're beautiful. You could have chipped Stop Kate's Stop looking at me like I'm crazy. This guy, <laughs> this telling of events. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> I would like everyone around the table to reenact <laughs> chucking a die. Here's what you did. What would that look like? What There's would Kate. chucking a die There's look like? Kate. Yeah. Matthew is yeah, Kate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Matthew. Yeah. Ooh. I'm Joe. Hey, say what would I, chucking a die look I'm like? I'm reenacting it. Say, be Kate. Say, can I see your die? Can I see that? Ooh, let me ride my Oh, play. this? Spike <laughs> right. right into Matthew's tray. Yeah, I, if we're just reenacting a chucking, because I did not see right. uh, the alleged chuck, chuck. I would assume it would be an overhand throw. Yes, exactly. and you overhand threw it. I you absolutely did, did not. <laughs> that is preposterous. <laughs> I went like this. Kate reached out. Our was, arms didn't reach. Uh -huh. So I went like this. I'm going to break another. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't actually it. do it. I place. went like this. Watch it. Get it on camera. <laughs> like this. Except, except that's what I did. When you Except threw you went, it, you threw it this way. What? How Instead of throwing it? it straight, you went. <laughs> I wish uh, the cameras were rolling. See that? Francis, were you the see cameras that? rolling at that time? Can we not reenact this over so my I God, if we it, got that on tape, it would be so hilarious his to die. show it. It hit his die, didn't even make the slightest sound. And Matthew's like, oh! <laughs> my die! <laughs> and I, I looked, looked at, at my it. die and I was, I was like, such disbelief. I guess. <laughs> I guess mine was made stronger. <laughs> it was forged. It was I, forged in the fires we of Norse's foundry. Throw our dice at our, each other's dice and see which one is the strongest. Yes. Right. yes. The yes. And cheer. then we can get a ranking. Yeah, a Which one racket. chips for. You just hold it like six inches above and drop it on it. And then we'll see who's uh, Natty 18, by the way. And this is. A, I want 20. <laughs> what I actually said to Joe, and this is a direct quote, I just looked at him in disbelief and I said, you are just a force of destruction on this earth, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, I know it's just it's just a die, but uh, I I I'd be sad. I'd be sad about it for a little while. I it's not like uh, the die is still beautiful. Like it's very nice, it's but fine. at the same time, it, it couldn't last a session before Joe. It didn't ruined. make a session. It didn't even make didn't a session. It didn't even make a session. Can we talk about Kate's catching skills for a second <laughs> oh, here? Like, how yeah, is this all hey, fall listen, on me? Hey, listen, I was going to stay quiet, but if you're going to come for me. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of blame you gotta for you. throw the dice at me for me to catch it. I think we should oh. talk about the catching skills. So, Kate, was it your fault? No, <laughs> of okay. course not. I held my, look how big my hand is, by the way. There's a lot of surface area for you to throw into. Relative and I was the, like, what yeah, the rest like of your this. Body. Is that a four or yeah. five? Like this, and he threw it. You, Stop. Do you see where it landed? <laughs> Off to the my left, your right over here. I think the problem is Matthew's hands were so tiny. You threw bad. They didn't cover the. My box. hands weren't involved. <laughs> I didn't think anyone would be so callous. He had utmost 
trust in us. <laughs> Something so expensive. I think the, funny, the, the funny thing is, is he's got about 80 useless dice around that thing. And I, I hit the <laughs> only nice one. The nice there are, yeah, there are plastic <laughs> dice. There are, there are, forgive me, your family friends. Like, that's Perfect. the thing. That's the thing to me, is the lack of respect for the sponsor. Yeah. Who sponsored the show. That's really what it comes down so to. So loyally for so long. And Not you're the just sponsor. chucking their dice at their other dice. Yeah. Now that die is slightly less random and it's random number generation. I don't think you can roll it. I think it's, I don't think you're, you should be allowed to roll it. I think it's done. <laughs> Troy wants to know if it's going to roll poorly or yeah, well. Right. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's not a regulation die now. It needs to be thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> or burned. Or destroyed. Burn it. Matthew, hurl it. it. Send in your die. Bring out the die hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Get it in slow mo, 120 <laughs> FPS. North <laughs> Foundry <laughs> destroyed by hammer. Uh, you wearing a cape? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> Can a man wear a cape without commentary from the peanut gallery? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> yes, I am wearing a cape. <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on over there, Cal? It's nice. <laughs> it is a very nice cape. Yeah. This was it was my birthday recently, and this was my birthday gift from my friend Nick Sheldon, who I've mentioned many times in the show. <laughs> I got a I got a I got a cape with no note. <laughs> and I had to figure out who sent me the cape. Did you really have to figure it out or did you know instantly? It took a little bit, but I, I threw through my investigative powers and my uh, <laughs> knowledge of my 35-year relationship with Nick Shelton, I was able to figure it out. Just got a little birthday cape? A little birthday cape. <laughs> I opened it up, I put it on, and Samantha said, like, oh, now you're, you could be George's dad's lawyer. <laughs> That's all I thought of with the cape. Yeah. Larry David. <laughs> yes. And uh, with this is another birthday gift I got. Too. This is houses and humans. Samantha. Houses and humans. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> fun. I'm wearing them both. <laughs> oh, that's oh, cute. God. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Happy belated. Thank you. The end yes, of that birthday. Seinfeld end episode is fantastic because uh, J <laughs> Jerry is, uh, he has this friend, it's a long story, but the friend is like thinking about jumping off a bridge oh, and Larry David as <laughs> the lawyer in the cape is like going to save him. He's like, who are you? I'm Frank Costanza's lawyer. Right. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the guy has no idea who that is. <laughs> guy in a cape. Anyways, have you ever had anything, uh, like I'm trying to think, I know I've had things that you didn't have for more than a couple minutes before it got destroyed. <laughs> that thing, no? that, besides that die, there must have been, I'm, I know I there's been like moments. I feel like I have, yeah, but I can't like, think of uh, an example. Uh, like you get a car and you scratch it within a day or, uh, God, I can't think of an think. example. I have an example and it's also Joe. It's oh. also Joe related? It's another Joe example? <laughs> it's not something I lost, it's something that Joe lost. We were all, uh, the three of us were at Treehouse Brewery. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. Joe, would you like to tell the story? <laughs> the three of us were at Treehouse Brewery. Uh, well, everybody here knows this story, but basically I got, beers there are not cheap and you only get two. That's it. And then they kick you out. They're normal, pr they're normal price beers. They're normal price beers. And, <laughs> yeah, but they're nice beers. So they're expensive. They're very nice they're beers. Yeah. Double a Bud Light. <laughs> and, they're, and they're beautiful and they're delicious and they're rare and precious. You can only get them there. You can't buy them in stores. Kate. Okay. So you can't even get cans of the ones you can get on draft there. Exactly. So I got a draft of a beer and I walked back and I sat down with my friends and I set it down on the side <laughs> of my Adirondack chair. And eight seconds later, I knocked the entire beer into my crotch. I don't even know what I was doing. The entire beer just boom. And it was like what, 45 degrees outside, 50 degrees outside. I, I have another Joe one. Are you thinking? The height of I'm thinking please, please. The flight to Seattle. Oh, this is the sake. The oh, airplane no. story. It's lining up. so funny. <laughs> We were all sitting in the same row playing that game. Race for the Galaxy. Race for the Galaxy. So and it was our so trade tables were packed. It was so cute. And you had a drink. I got a second beer. <laughs> you had a beer. <laughs> I don't remember why flight. this happened. At, but like, at 10 30 a.m. I was having a really good time. <laughs> we were having a great time. We were playing a card I had a, game. I had a glass great. of wine. We were playing a card game. It was really fun. <laughs> Joe got his second beer. Our we were the row down. that were like giggling. Yeah. We were the giggle squad. We were the giggle squad. Um, I don't know what you were doing. You were fussing with something, moving things around. No, no, no. No, I... What was it? He didn't do anything. <laughs> it wasn't his fault. He had put his beer on the tray, and we have cards everywhere playing Race for the Galaxy. Like, our tray tables are full. And the plane... 
dipped. The freaking pilot put on the flaps full while we were like 20,000 feet. The plane. Just the plane for one second went whoomp. Lost a bit of elevation. And Joe's beer perfectly slid backward off the tray, tipped, and poured directly into his seat pocket on the airplane. It couldn't have landed more perfectly. Almost not so a sad. drop hit the rug of the airplane. We, I'm we sure like, you didn't have anything valuable in the, pocket in the seat was pocket, did you? Full of beer. It, he opened it. He opened it. The beer is sloshing. It is holding it. So and we're I like, had to get up and go to the bathroom and like get all these paper towels. It was a full cup of beer, and we're like, that's and I think you saw us. You're just like I was sitting on the aisle across from you, and I was like laughing. What did Joe do now? <laughs> and at first we were like, that sucks. Like it's a, how are we going to get the beer out of it? But you know, worst case scenario, it barely dripped on your backpack. We were like, okay, it's like barely dripping through the seat. <laughs> we're trying to clean it. We're cleaning it. Time has passed. <laughs> Joe, Joe reaches it to wipe it out with paper towel. And he pulls, he pulls out his phone. <laughs> Which had been in there the entire time. Completely dot. forgot my phone was in there and it was completely submerged <laughs> in the beer. Such an animal. And, yeah, and then Sydney's like, you gotta get rice. <laughs> get this man rice. <laughs> Always with the rice. <laughs> <laughs> Delta brand rice. I don't no. know about expensive stuff, but you do seem to lose a lot of beers. Yeah, well, I just seem to lose or break things immediately after getting them, I guess. <laughs> Joe's been attacked a lot here today. And yeah. I think he needs the services of a good attorney. As a man wearing a cape, <laughs> I'd like to offer my... <laughs> well, I have, I have another Joe one. There's another oh, Joe one? Oh, my God. God. <laughs> this one has been told on the show before, so I won't repeat it, but the pickle incident. Oh, God. Oh, the pickle. Uh, pickle. One dollar pickle. Let's not replay the entire pickle incident. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a clip show now. I know. Well, you've done so many horrible things. This yeah. podcast is probably the only thing you haven't broken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Knock on wood. Oh, Everyone. Wood. Is uh, anybody else's mic acting up? Is this uh, something wrong? Is there? A... <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, more clips from our past. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do you guys remember episode 135 of the Glass Cannon podcast? Here it is. <laughs> that would make this week so much easier. For all of us. All like, of us. <laughs> My favorite part of that bit you just did is that you looked to your to the side as if they, we were going to put up a video <laughs> of an every... audio medium. <laughs> well, what was episode 135? Or was that just a random you number? Remember? A random number. You don't even remember. Joe knows. Joe, Joe, Joe's Joe pretty good at this. Episodes. 135, we're looking at book. Three. Della, it's the Della incident, uh, episode 135. Wait, there really? Are, there are many Della incidents. Yeah, it's right around there. 131, 135. Somebody's going to look this up. Something have to look it up. Something about... Uh, <laughs> Ranger Things 2. Ranger Things. Oh, my God. That's the beginning of book four. Yeah. So it's right after, oh. just post Della. Yes, yes. I think that's the first episode of book four. The oh, first, my The wow. first comment on Reddit about the episode is, this may be my favorite episode. It was oh. fantastic. Oh. We used to make bangers. We did, remember? <laughs> and now remember? we just reminisce. <laughs> now we just talk about our bangers. Now we just, podcast is different. Now we just break expensive The dice. second comment is, haha, chelish buttholes. <laughs> Unknown. We'll never yeah. know what that means. Huh. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, the nation. <laughs> I want to jump right in. I want to get right into yes, the action please. here. Uh, I already shouted out the sponsors. It's time to get to work. Uh, obviously, there was the whole uh, Gnome Fortress incident. Mm -hmm. Then bring Cory Mona back, and uh, you speak with Lemma Feldthorne, and she's like, All right, I spoke with the Oak Stewards. It seems like this. Kanipo the Slim situation is one that needs to be dealt with. Bolon was just a piece of this machine. If there's a ritual that's going to make everyone extinct, maybe you could help us. And you're like, we're in. And she said, okay, well, you should, uh, you're investigators. That's what I was told. Why don't you do some investigating? Uh, you need to find out. All right, one of you, one of you is an investigator. Uh, you should do some investigating. And uh, she mentioned you should go to the Quaking Stacks. Uh, you, Brother Ramius, had already been there, so you already had a relationship. Yeah, but the first time they didn't mention that 
dope ass tree. I think he did mention the tree. Did he? Go back. He's like, you should come back sometime and you could commune with the library tree. But at the time, you probably didn't know what it meant. Yeah, I was just like, see ya. I could feel the pressure of solo role playing where like everyone else at the table is like, wrap up your scene. Let's go. So that we can continue the story. (laughs) Also, Brother Ramius didn't know it meant drugs. Right. Yeah. True. I didn't know it meant French and God. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Feeling that sweet, sweet high, high on that God sap. <laughs> um, <laughs> getting high <laughs> on that God sap. Let's just write that one down. She also said that there was a uh, survivor of a recent Gorga attack, a guy by the name of Pa Mosby. You should check that out at Mosby Farm. And, uh, you know, you had mention of the Thinlands. There is an area... Uh, along the eastern, northeastern border of the Wildwood, um, known as Thinlands Farms. Perhaps you could go investigate that as well. So last week you went to the Quaking Stacks. Do you remember what you learned? Yes. What did you learn? Uh, we learned uh, about the defeat and imprisonment, 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 there we go, of a slim creature of slender lurking shadows thousands of years ago. Possibly that the Obnobulate Curse was created in retaliation for the elves defeating this person or figure. Uh, we also learned And the that- key part of that is if this is true, then, uh, and they're speaking of Kanipo, Kanipo's been around for millennia. Yeah. Uh, we also learned a little bit about the fin- the Thinlands. They are a co- colorless forest located in the shadowy realm of Nighthold, once ruled by the exotic ex- exiled <laughs> Count Renalk. I'm sure he was a little exotic as well. Skid is uh, cosplaying as Count Renalk. Yeah, that's <laughs> his, my little homage. Good evening, Count Renalk. Hello, I'm Count Renalk. Oh, wow. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, so and you, we learned that there yeah. was some sort of, uh, I don't have copious notes. There was some sort, I don't have any notes. There was some sort of line <laughs> of like lights. A light line. Demarcated, yeah, capital L light line. Mm-hmm. And there were like lanterns, like placed at a certain whatever that, uh, kept holds the land the border. and yeah, holds the border the of Nighthold. Of Nighthold. Yeah, it holds Nighthold. It holds Nighthold. The exact the quote night. was: "The border of Nighthold is marked by the light line." Damn, nice man. Oh, it's the light line. I have. That's the weird. Night I wrote line. the border of Nighthold is surrounded by the light line. Who's right? I don't know. I don't take your notes. Let's take it back to the. Let's go back. <laughs> you know what? Let's take a look at last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Now I can We're all looking at different TVs. <laughs> oh, they have a lot they of monitors. surrounded by TVs? <laughs> a lot. You should see what's the, going on we here. We have the dome. The new dome <laughs> yeah. is everywhere. We're filming this in Vegas in the sphere. <laughs> the sphere. Uh, in the sphere. I can't wait till we play the sphere. <laughs> That'll be fun. You two and Glass Cannon Live. We'll be in residency at the sphere. <laughs> We'll play. Sick. We're going to be in residency until we finish an entire six book. Could you imagine just spending our days at the Mirage pool, <laughs> our nights doing shows at the Sphere? Oh my God, move all, move all our families out there. Yep. Just live in yeah. Vegas. Yep. Uh, <laughs> like Penn and Teller. <laughs> just walking around just drinking all day. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, at the end of the John, you guys, uh, I can't remember where you stayed. Did you go back to Seven Arches? No. We no. St- uh, yes. yeah. yeah, we were in yeah. Seven Arches. Well, yeah, all this is, oh, is yeah, sorry. Yeah, you went yeah. back to Seven Arches, and as you're walking around, you notice a figure in an alleyway staring at you, a little too tall, like seven, eight feet tall, uh, staring, uh, silhouette. You guys are all creeped out by this, and you're all alone, and you walk slowly to this alley. Hello there. Look, uh, what, are you looking at us? And once you get there, There's no one there. Not even a trace that anyone was ever there. Awful. You then go to bed. You keep watch all night. You don't hear any sounds whatsoever, except for, uh, you know, just the general sounds of the inn that you're staying in. And then when you wake up the next day to head out, you open the door and carved into the ground, right outside, or not the ground, but the wood outside of your door, is like um, a strange symbol halfway between a five-pointed star and an elongated stick figure. And that's where we ended last week. What do you want to do now? Do you want to go to Pa Mosby's farm or do you want to travel a little further and go into the Thinlands farm? Isn't it night? Shouldn't we go to bed? No, it's, no, it's first morning. Thing, it's the oh, morning. Do you have uh, this image? Can we see this image? Ooh. I don't. Uh, okay. Because I would like halfway to between a five-pointed star and a thin man. Well, if you like, if the, the top point was really long, it drew a little head on it. 
and then little hands and feet. Yeah. Like maybe points. the uh, that man that Michelangelo drew. Yeah, the uh, bifurcated man. Oh, so he, the, the true, yeah, arms true, are yeah. like this. It was Leonardo. Star. That's Leonardo. <laughs> Whatever. We like knew Leonardo what she did, meant. Yeah. It's all the Renaissance. Who cares? It was, <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> You are in art history. I have an art degree. <laughs> I have an art history degree. Wow. You, wait, really? Yeah. Kate and I were looking at paintings one time, and Kate, I was like, oh, I love this like French style. I don't remember what it is. And Kate goes, yeah, me neither. I have an art history degree. I don't remember shit. <laughs> Walked away from it. <laughs> she ripped it. Sliced it with Took a pen. knife, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. But yeah. imagine, like, if it's a really long... Too many electric forests for that art history. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. too fast. <laughs> too many electric forests. A long figure with its limbs extended would kind of look like a star, but it's really just a long person. In my mind, it looks kind of like a lovey, like with a, like where it's like a rabbit head and, and then it's a little blanket. What is a lovey? Like for babies. Like a... Hold on. I just Googled lovey. Lovey's come in all shapes and sizes. There are, there's no text. Is that just another lovey. word? Lovey is one who is. Oh, lovey. I know what you mean by lovey, yeah. Lovey. Oh, uh, the blanket body. It has like a blanket, a blanket body. body and it's got an a head. elephant head. Or, yeah, or whatever. No, this is more stick figure It doesn't flow out like a okay. ghost. Or Maybe it. we shouldn't get too hung up on this. No, I want to spend hours talking about it. <laughs> I need to know exactly what I'm seeing. <laughs> I need a whiteboard. Here's what I think it looks like. <laughs> Roll the whiteboard along. <laughs> I think the original plan was for us to go to the farm. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was. So I would like to continue. Ha, Mosby's farm. Ha, Stick to the plan. Mosby's farm. And you know, uh, she said, like, uh, our, our elders think it's like three nights, three days. This, this shit could go down. It seems very imminent based on their prognostications from reading Bolon Journal. And it's a day. You spend a day in the stacks. It'll be a day to go to Pamos. And then it's a day to get and to, then to the a day thin to get to, So, yeah, your, your time is of the essence. Well, time is of the essence, but I cannot, uh, in good conscience, move on without investigating this this symbol. I think it's ridiculous. Like mm. somebody carved this outside of our room. So, at the very least, like investigator wise, like can we just dig into the actual? Was it cut with something? Is it burned in? Like uh, how was it left? And none of us heard anything, which is very yeah. creepy. Yeah, I, and I, is it resonating was, magic at all? It, it looks like it looks like it was carved directly into the wood. You know, with, with something sharp. But um, there's maybe, an maybe a knife. There's an artistic. Let's nature. not jump to conclusions, Matthew. You're right. You're right. Like it's, you it's, have it's, no proof. To leave. There's an artistic nature to it, in 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 so far as that, like it looked like it was drawn. But if you're really going to examine it, you get down there, and it's thin, thin, thin carvings that sort of imitate painting. It's almost beautiful if it wasn't so eerie. Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw. Um. So I'm going to designate my per two pursue leads uh, to be. You have a new pursue a lead every day. Yes, as per the rules. This is going to happen. Oh, sorry, I didn't know how a lot. Uh, Kanipo, as as one, and then Thinlands as the other. Kanipo, Thinlands. So uh, walk us through this again. You get a bonus every time you're doing a John that has to. Con yes, technically I'm supposed to spend a minute examining the details of one clue and the subject related to that clue as the target of an active investigation. And it can usually be it typically a single creature, item, or a small location but the GM might allow a different scope for your investigation. I stopped listening when you said, but the GM. So I imagine you're on the ground with your magnifying glass, yes. running your fingers along the carving. I am using my magnifying glass, um, but I'm gonna do an occultism check, right? Okay. Or is it yeah. arcana? Um, I would do occultism. Okay. It seems like an occult symbol. So I'm gonna roll, and if this is if it's related to Kanipa or the Thin Lands, I get a plus one. Uh, okay, so that will be a 19. 19. It's not a symbol you recognize or have ever heard of. Um, you see the five-pointed star kind of reminds you of, um, what is the... Uh, the Sahedrin? Sahedrin medallion? Or? Yeah, but in, in um, Pathfinder, there's a five-pointed John. Seven-pointed Sahedrin medallion. Thank you. Star. Uh, so yeah, you're like, oh, maybe, maybe it has some connection to that. The Sahedrin rune, seven-pointed star that symbolizes the seven virtues of rule of early Thassalon. I was like, is it Thass does it strike me as Thassalonian? And Vaguely at Thassalonian. At first glance, but... But it's five, not seven, right? It's five, not seven. It's a head, two arms, two feet, but they all end in points, basically. Yeah, and while there is an artistic style to it, it's still very crude. If anything you get the sense that it's a warning. Yeah. Mm. I get the sense that this is a warning. 
Uh, I'm going to do a, a religion roll real quick just to see if it's associated with any religions mm-hmm. uh, I've ever read about or heard about. Natural one. <laughs> um, Is that your new die? I'm going to drop this gem die onto another gem die. You're a hundred percent sure. Um, it is connected to Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is a religion called Judaism. This is a whole can of worms we're opening. Yeah. Ah. Uh, we're open, we've opened, they've opened the door to another plane. <laughs> <laughs> I, and given us a warning. And, <laughs> and you feel compelled to convert. <laughs> I have a feeling well. It's really going to throw my character off. Uh, I'm now Jewish. Stop rolling natural ones. I'm not Jewish. <laughs> I'm now Jewish. I, guys, I want to tell you something. Brother Amius is now Jewish. Wow. <laughs> Mazel. <laughs> um, we kind of a bar mitzvah for us. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we make our way out to uh, the farm? Yeah, let's do it. Um, we have hor- take access a cab? to horses? Yeah. Yeah, the uh, got horses we got an ox cart. provide you with horses. Oh, yeah. We have the obviously, ox cart. Obviously, yeah. Buggles doesn't feel Yeah, Brother Amius r- uh, drives a mule from behind an ox cart and... Buggles rides in the ox cart. <laughs> Trembling in fear yeah, at being surrounded by horses. The ox cart that is uh, stained with Lucky's blood. Oh. Oh. Man. Too soon. Too soon. And of oh, course, man. you have. Uh, Let it go. Don't forget <laughs> a newish party member who uh, oh, right. slept, right. who shared a room with you last night, slept and didn't right next kill to kill you. you. And didn't kill you. And who has Did you? artwork. Ooh. Oh! Can oh. we see the Get out of here! Please oh. refer to your oh. 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 Look at God. that. Oh! That's cool. That's yeah. Holy hell. crap. At least that's how she looks at the moment. Right. Wow, she looks angry at the moment. She yeah. has a serious sort of resting face. Yeah. She seemed much nicer when I met her. She's bad ass. <laughs> resting <laughs> elf face. We'll, this, we'll be the judge of that. This art... I'm in love with it. It's so it's awesome. gorgeous. Really yep, shout out we'll to Matt Forsyth. It. Yeah, give us a city, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take us for a dance. So she, uh, I said before uh, in the previous episode, but this just like encapsulates her whole vibe. She has like long flowing white hair. It's very thick. Um, she wears these white robes uh, that have pants underneath. So it's useful during battle. She's not wearing a dress. Uh, and she has this red katana at her side, which matches She has like red eyeliner, very subtly, um, these red sort of wrist gauntlets and these red ties in her hair. But everything else is like pristine white and silver, this like silver breastplate. Um, And her features, they are like fox-like. I said that she has like very, uh, not rodent-like, I just wanna say fox-like, small features. She has like a very serious sort of face. Um, But yeah, that's that's Asta. You can now see her, but this is her. Asta, really cool. Asta, 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 like pasta without a P. Like pasta without a P, and that's how she explains her name. Asta, like pasta. Like Nick and Nora's dog. Like Nick and Nora's dog, which Matthew explained to me. The only thing she's missing is a cool black cape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make capes happen. She would never. She would never. <laughs> I'm trying to make capes she happen. She would never do that. But you guys saw her. Um... I think she's missing is a cool. <laughs> Just imagine, imagine how much cooler she'd look. Uh, for a second, I thought she was a hero, but then, no cape. No, no cape. cape. So this I guess is, she's just an NPC. This is her human form. That's though. how you tell. That's how you tell. <laughs> PC. My parents have asked me, "What does PC mean for Zen PC?" It's very, it's very easy, like, Mom. Cape. Very, if C they're wearing a cape, C stands for PC. Cape. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all NPCs at this table. Is yeah. that what yeah. we are? That's what we one. ended up playing. All but wow. one. All but one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you want to go to uh, Thin Land John. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not Thin Land. No, John. Farm. no Pa Mosby's. Pa Mosby Farm. Pa Mosby's, right. John. Um, all right, so, yeah, it's going to take you the better part of the morning into the afternoon to make your way to Pa Mosby's Farm. All you know is he is a recent survivor of a Gorga attack. Not unlike you. Um although you killed the Gorga. You come up on this small farm. You see it in the distance. Very like a ranch-style home, pretty decent acreage, little ranch-style farmhouse. And uh, there's a uh, rickety wooden fence uh, surrounding the property. Maybe some uh, beasts of burden um, tilling the fields, like dragging uh, big 
metal shit. I don't know anything about farming. <laughs> Ragging <and> fucking tomatoes. <laughs> really feeling immersed. In the- <laughs> You're well, you really know, painting like, a picture here that's uh, like a beast of burden with like a thing on its back that's like scraping the land. One of those things. Like a hoe. A plow. A plow. What did you call me? <laughs> plow. That's what she calls you. Oh, plow. <laughs> Are you a hoe or a plow? Are you a hoe or a plow? <laughs> it's personal. You see a, uh, a young man come around from the back of the house, uh, 12, 13 years old. He's carrying a, a basket of vegetables, and he sees you and drops the vegetables to the ground. He's like, Ma! Ma! They've come to take me away! Ma! Ma, save me! They're going to take me back to hell! And he runs into the house. And uh, a woman rushes out onto the porch. She's very pretty, beautiful, uh, wearing a simple farm dress, late 30s maybe, early 40s. And she rushes out to the sound of the boy's cries and and then sees the group of you. And he's like, Ma, look, devils! They've come to return me to my ancestral home at the right hand of the Prince of Darkness! Ma! He's screaming and he's like, Jiminy, 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 it's all right! Ah! He runs behind the house. Jiminy, they aren't devils! And like we always tell you, you're not a devil spawn! I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. My son is a, a, a bit troubled. He believes every stranger he comes in contact with is a devil or a demon meant to take him to hell. Uh, return him to hell, I should say. He believes he's the son of the high prince of a great devil, and one day they will return to take him home. This happens pretty much every day. It's <laughs> what? it's horrible. The mailman, the milkman, UPS drivers. <laughs> it's exhausting. Um, I have to ask, are you devils or, or any sort of demon? No. I, I didn't think so. I just have to ask. He knows if I don't ask. You're definitely not devils. No, I don't ask. Is, <laughs> yeah. is your son a demon? No, no, he, he just, it's a malady he's had since he could speak. How he did just, he get the idea that he was a devil? I don't know. Some children are b- born with the ability to play the piano. My son, Jiminy, was born uh, with this belief that he is the son of a devil. I have to say, that's much worse than being inherently able to play the piano. Yes, and we've tried to teach him the piano, hoping hoping he would take a, a shine to it and forget all about this devilry. But I suppose the two skill sets don't overlap. They don't, and we've learned that. We've, we, we've got him into hockey and football and uh, frisbee. Nothing. He just the, believes he's a devil spawn. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Have you ever been visited by a devil? There has been no devil activity in our lives ever. Sense motive. No connection <laughs> yeah. to sense. devils. We're not even religious. We I'm, don't even go to church. I'm sensing the shit out of your motives. Cacti. Yeah, perception check to see. That. <laughs> Brother Ramius just staring at oh. this. Yeah, Brother Ramius is what? like, that's what one. I'm sorry we disturbed you. Let's leave. Dirty. <laughs> a dirty, filthy 20. A dirty, filthy 20. No, she seems really distraught over the very strange illness that her child has. Have you ever considered trying to teach him something and telling them it is what the devils do? No. Give me an example. You could teach him to plow your fields. But we have the beasts of burden for that. They don't seem to know what they're doing. They, they're ripping up the tomatoes. Things have fallen apart ever since Pa's attack. Um, That's why we're here, in fact. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm sure you're here for a reason. We don't get visitors beyond delivery people. What is uh, your name? Moira. Moira, I am Brother Ramius. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm very sorry to hear of your son's suffering. Thank you. How long has this been going on? Um, with our son, with Jiminy? Yes. Uh, ever since he was three, four years old. So over a decade. You cannot tie it to any one incident. There was never one traumatic event. When he was little, we assumed it was an overactive imagination, but it just sort of spun out of control. Um, We hope that there will be a a, a cure someday. Uh, Perhaps it's the proximity to the Wildwood. Uh, I've, 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 I've asked my husband if we could perhaps relocate our farm, but he is stubborn 
and uh, refuses to do so. I thought that maybe that would make a difference, but um, no, it, you know, most days we don't get visitors, but it does um, sort of limit our travel. We can't go on vacation mm. because everyone he sees, he assumes is a devil meant to take him to hell. Brother Ramius, in addition to being a, a man of the cloth, is actually a rather brilliant medic. Perhaps he might be able to assist you. Like an exorcism. Perhaps. I am unsure what, uh, if this indeed comes from some sort of possession, I don't know. But I would very much like to speak with him, with your permission, and you're welcome to uh, observe. It's going to be hard to convince him you're not a demon. Perhaps I don't need to. All right. It, is this why you're here, to, to help No, us? I'm sorry. Uh, it isn't. We really wish to speak to Pa. My husband. Your husband, I guess, about his incident with the Gorga. Uh, it is actually the Gorga who we are hunting. Yes, Pa, he is not well. Um, two nights ago, he was ambushed um, while returning home after a, a day of selling turnips uh, in Seven Arches. We have the best turnips in a hundred miles, you know. Must be the soil. Another reason he doesn't want to leave this farm. It's very superstitious. We heard about this. Yeah. We heard that the Thin Lands creates like the vibrant soil. Yeah. yeah. And now keep in mind, you're not in the Thin Lands. This no, is not Thin Lands. But, but, but right. the farmers the out on the borderlands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, people would deal with the dangers just because of the value of the, of the soil. It seems selfish, if we're being honest. Like yeah. your son being afflicted this badly and you're like, but that soil, though. Yeah, but the we're turnips. Making, the turnips we're making are money, yes. and that's all that matters. You like turnips? I love them. Perhaps you'd like to try one. I Eat them raw. Yes, please. please. I'd like to try some turnips. Here, he spilled them all on the ground, but they're clean. Our soil is very clean. Here, have a turnip. <laughs> I just bite into the raw turnip. <laughs> I bet it's the raw turnip. Yeah, we, it's very hard to eat. Uh, no one would ever just eat a raw turnip, but uh, I would. It melts in your mouth. It is quite delicious, and if you like turnips, um, it's M good. May we perhaps uh, speak with him? I know he's not feeling well. We will not be intrusive. Just um, a brief conversation. In, 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 in what is this in regards to? We are hunting these gorga. We're uh, trying the to gorga, find yes. out where they are coming from and how to stop them from ever attacking your farm again. Yes, I mean, you're welcome to speak with him, but he's not, he's not right in the head. He, he had a slow day at the market and, um, and was coming back uh, home when he heard his mule, Shailen, uh, scream out in pain. He turned, and somehow, in a moment, she had been completely eviscerated, and then whatever hurt Shailen uh, sent to uh, attacking him. He ran 10 miles all the way home, um, but... He hasn't been right since I, I bandaged, bandaged him up, but he hasn't left his bed. He's been traumatized by the entire experience. Just keeps talking about his dead mule. He always loved that mule. Shailen. Yes. You name all your mules after No, your just Shailen. He, he had a quite, quite a fondness for that mule. Loved that mule more than me sometimes, I felt. I thought you said you were not religious. I'm not. Well, no. I suppose if you were religious, you wouldn't name a... Your lifestyle. Certain after a god. I suppose that's true. May we speak with him? The way he looked at that mule. Talked to her. Touched her. She okay. had touched me that way. All right. I, I think Are you... This is her. This is the wife did it. <laughs> Are you... Jealousy. Yep. Yes. Can you account for your whereabouts the night of the attack? Yes, I was here. Where were you on the night of? I was here with Jiminy, going over his letters. His letters? Yes. I think it was... H that day. <laughs> H, we were recovering H. <laughs> he's, he's 13. How, is, is how old? Like I was just going to say, like, how old is he? He's like 15. He has, he's well, troubled. He's we do one young. letter a year. By the time he's 26, <laughs> he'll have the whole alphabet. He'll really have it down. <laughs> and we'll start the slow, arduous process of stringing them together. <laughs> we will all, <laughs> we, will, we will never forget H year. It's By been a hard year. The the H year. By his 40s, you should have his numbers as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. All right. Well, I, I just want to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you suspect your husband was fucking a mule? No. <laughs> At least I don't think so. I just I just wish that he would handle me like a mule once in a while. Okay. All know. right. We have we, we have motive. In the <laughs> you should just communicate that with him. 
Right? I don't understand. Right? Yeah. Yes. It seems about accurate. That seems. I've, I've, I've told him that I'm not happy. Be like, hey, this is maybe what I'm into. We can try out. Have you expressed that desire to him explicitly? No, I mean, I, he knows that I'm not happy, but he doesn't care because of the turnips. We do well. How do the turnips put a roof over into our head? your bedroom? Perhaps you can they use don't. the turnips in the bedroom. Perhaps you should just speak with Pa. <laughs> yes, please. And I'll deal please. with my own please. sick son and my lack of satisfaction <laughs> another time. What's your story? Sorry, Sarah? I... You look scrawny and weak. Yeah. <laughs> You're my type. You like thin men? <laughs> Doesn't everyone? Asta? <laughs> Come this way. Meet Pa. <laughs> As I said, he is a uh, little off. He's not normally uh, so uh, erratic, and he has been drinking. But uh, this come morning, this way, uh, he's self-medicating. Uh, as we walk, I, Asta would like to say to Brother Remius, "Aren't you a cleric of a sort? Yes. Why? Why did you not help the boy?" I don't understand. I, I asked to speak with him. But you didn't help him. I'm confused. <laughs> as, as am I. Wouldn't you put all your efforts into helping him? Of course, if I can. Oh. I think he did try. He I've already asked. I'm sure effort. we'll be speaking with him next. Oh. Do you want him to forcibly tackle the boy? It's, it seems did try. Why don't you help him? I don't believe I would be able to. Hmm. Still don't fully trust her. Only known her a day. Yes, quick question for you while we're at it. Where were you on the night of the attack? Did you carve some shit outside our door last night? <laughs> she looks at her door. Carve some shit outside your door. <laughs> <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> and guys. <laughs> Are you into some weird tall star shit? <laughs> you see her look at her, her hands. She does have very long, pointed nails. And she sort of lowers them beneath her robe. No, I did not. I didn't think so, but you know, crossing every option off the list. You are thorough. You're very a thorough important. group. I'd like to add, I'd like to uh, change one of my pursuer leads to Asta's Asta. nails. <laughs> Asta's nails. Anything to do with Asta's nails. I do believe, now that you ask, that we will get very little from this man. I think we may learn more from the boy. It will be important to speak with him. But he might be so erratic and filled with fear that he won't speak of why he feels this way. But we can try. Yes, let's try. I think she's right, though, to remind us that we should really make an effort to of drill down on this boy and try to help him see if he has something that can help us. Thank you, Buggles. Good call, Asta. Children are very smart. They're in tune with things that adults don't understand. I, I agree. It's true. That's why they should be in charge of everything. Well, children. Children. How should be in charge of children everything. Should be kings how old are you, Buggles? <laughs> Thirteen. Children. Oh. Should be should kings be and dukes. <laughs> they should. We just learned. And what shall the grown ups do, we Buggles? Just grown ups should be subservient in every respect. <laughs> Laborers. Yes. <laughs> Blindly following the orders of the toddlers. And cream puffs and cake for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Surely that would be the menu. Mm. She brings you into the house, and uh, Jiminy was like hiding around a corner, and he sees you. He goes, No! They'll deem me unworthy again! Ah! Dup, 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 dup. Runs upstairs. Jiminy! Jiminy! They're not! Come this way. And she takes you uh, around a corner and down a long hallway. And you just see a, a single room and the door is cracked, a little light coming through. And she's like, um, dum, dum. What? Uh, pa, you have some visitors. Visitors, bring them in. I don't get many visitors these days. Oh, right. man. Troy is about to have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Regretting this oh, entire... Ball. That's why when we were outside, I said, let's just move on. <laughs> I don't like it when he has a lot of fun. 
<laughs> Always bad news. He is going to love We're this about guy. to learn nothing, nothing and lose an hour. An hour. And we'll be a lot of laughs. A lot of laughs. But nothing will be accomplished. <laughs> we will bring joy to someone's day. <laughs> we open the door. She opens the door and uh, ushers you in. And uh, you walk in a bedroom. And there's an older man, like maybe mid to late 50s. Uh, maybe even early 60s, much older than his wife. Uh, he's got a patchy white beard. It's like just clumped on his face. He's lying in bed, wide-eyed. You see several empty liquor bottles on the bedside table next to him. And he says, oh, my friends, you're all here. Good, I'd like to make a toast. He grabs an invisible glass, holds it up. To my beautiful Shailen. The best mule in all the kingdoms, always there to listen, to smile back when I made a funny joke, to comfort me when I needed company. Comforting? Comforting. <laughs> and now dead at the hands of monsters. <laughs> he drinks from the invisible glass. Sir, if, you, if I may. Now before you get into this, we're going to get into a little mechanic. Oh, oh wow. mechanic. Oh, investigation what? mini game? A little investigation oh. mini, John. Balloon pop or bubble pop. We're playing a mini game. I'm only going to give you so much information based on the success of your checks. Uh, the checks that I will be rolling. Matthew. With my new John. Uh, you can take. I would like to roll them with my new John, but we don't know if it will work. You want to hand me your John? <laughs> Just throw it. It will have to go through Joe and I don't touch it. <laughs> Can I see it? Let me see this chip. You're not touching any of my things that bring them. <laughs> those purple <laughs> ones. Those purple ones are nice. You can take awesome. a, uh, keep in mind, whatever you choose is what you, what you got to do as you're role playing. You can take a diplomatic approach. You just want to talk to him. Diplomacy. You can try and intimidate him if you're good at intimidation and think that's the right. Listen to me, it's drunken. Tactic here. <laughs> Shake him out of it. Medicine, <laughs> perhaps, um, to, you know, try and uh, ease his suffering uh, or perception a real thoughtful ear. Those are your options, and there are different DCs based on what you choose. What if I were to offer him a dose of shiver to reduce his uh, reduce his fear? Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, Classic. I mean, he gave you the four options. You're like, <laughs> what about option five? <laughs> uh, no, I think option that option would fit into one of those. Perhaps. Medicine. Medicine, or give him the drug and just see what happens. Percent. Yeah, I mean, what I would do is I would give you a bonus to your check. Or a penalty if Shiver fucks him up. Shiver could really fuck him up. Yeah, Shiver's a hell of a drug. That's a serious drug. It will reduce his frightened condition, mm -hmm. and then it will make him clumsy, and then it will put him to sleep. Is he frightened Are you supposed still? to mix, mix Shiver with alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> That's a I, real... It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, need, we don't, I don't think we need to go to Shiver right away. It might kill him. So know. only one of us can do a check? Or nope. It? You just tell me what you want to do. I'll roll the checks, and then we'll see what happens. Everybody can all do different checks. Mm -hmm. So perception would be is my best skill. Perception, of the medicine, ones he's, intimidation. He's listed. Uh, despite it not being mathematically advantageous, uh, I uh, my first gut instinct was to go with diplomacy, uh, not medicine. I, I was thinking medicine for the kid. For this guy, I was thinking more along the lines of commiserating that we had been attacked by Gorgas mm -hmm. and we're trying to stop that from ever happening again. What's so your bonus? Taking that approach plus six. Okay. I have a proposal. Okay. Um, I have stabling lore. And I'm oh. wondering if maybe I can like relate to him on the level of a like, mule. I, I've known a few hot mules. <laughs> yeah, like I know how the relationships are out there with mules. All I right. Guess. Uh, what is your stabling lore? Plus five. All right, so you're going to try and play upon his mule s sympathies. <laughs> Plus six, you said? Plus five. Plus five. Uh, okay. Um, I'll do perception. Perception. And what's uh, your bone? It's plus seven. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, it'll be, I don't get any bonuses for this unless it's related to. Actually, no. You you use your pursue elite activity. That's that just gives me a bonus of perception. Okay, process. so get, you get to use that. All right. So pl it's a plus one. So it's plus eight. Okay, plus eight. Uh, great. And so I can I do intimidation? Okay, keep that in mind. Well, I want people to do theirs first, and then if like things aren't working, you're gonna come in. Yeah. Good, good well, cop, I was going to do, like, diplomacy, too, so we could do, like, good cop, bad cop. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Keep that in mind. Uh, what have, is your intent? It's a plus four. I have the Dark Fields Kitsune, so I I can exert my unsettling presence to subtly demoralize others. 
So it's more so like, I don't know, she looks weird. Like, I think maybe her fur starts to stand up and her yeah. teeth, like, so kind of. Dark Lord, you would have a queen! <laughs> <laughs> and what is your uh, perception? Plus eight. Or diplomacy plus eight. Diplomacy, excuse me, plus eight. Okay, great. I didn't realize Buggles was so diplomatic. I'm quite charming, yes. All right, so you come in. He's very likable. Yeah. He makes a toast to his dead mule, Shaylin, who was taken at the hands of monsters. And then he pours himself an actual drink. Did you, did you try the turnips? They were quite delicious. They were fantastic. Even raw. We make a turnip wine here at Mosby Farms. It's you not perfected say. yet, but we're gonna we're gonna get it perfected, and everyone's gonna buy it when I can walk again. And Moira looks at you. He can actually walk just fine. <laughs> his injuries are not that bad physically. It's just his mind. Pa, I'm going to go uh, check on Jiminy. Um, you be nice. May I come with you? Where are we going? I'm speaking to the wife. <laughs> what, you want to come with more? Um, may I come with you and speak with him? Yes. Oh. Yes, you may come and speak with Jiminy. Right this way. And they leave. <laughs> Leaving the four of you with Pa Mosby. <laughs> Do you guys want um, some of this experimental turnip wine? Yes. I think it's pretty good. I'll take some. All right. Yeah, and he spills a glass towards you. <laughs> it's empty by the time. <laughs> it's got like a... It's <laughs> only the one drink ever. She's just going to kind of like pretend to nurse it. Anybody else? I don't drink. All right. What are you here for then? If we're not having a party. We wanted to ask you questions mm. about Shaylin's death. Shaylin, <laughs> they love their We might be able to offer you a bit of respite and justice for that. You can bring her back to life? Are you sorcerers? <laughs> Buggles, young Buggles here has many abilities. Uh, yes, I, I, I think I can sense her presence. Ooh, she, she loved you very much. She did. She was very fond of you. She was. And she was uh, quite athletic. Yes. Oh, oh, she was a mix. <laughs> <laughs> so she had a good heart mm -hmm. and um, strong. Heart. Strong and. I mean, yeah. There's nothing quite like the bond between um, someone and their steed. And those demons took her. Like it was to try to take Jiminy. What happened? Tell us everything. Uh, this creature. Devil spawn, perhaps undead monstrosity. An animal, except it doesn't walk on two feet. It's like a skull dog with eyes like saucers full of night. Gorka. Like a doll's eye. Like a doll's eye. Took my Shaylin. I turned, and she was in pieces on the ground. And then I felt something lash at my leg, and I set off to running. I've never run so fast in my life. And I had to leave poor Shaylin by. She'll never forgive me when I see her in the afterlife. Oh, she says she does forgive you. She says that you did the right thing because you only would have died too. And then who would have told her story to the world? She said that to you. She did. I can. She's here now in oh. the room. Uh, is, does the letter P mean anything to you? No. H? Uh, that's that's this year. Oh, yes. Oh, she was listening in on the boys' <laughs> lessons. She's very fond of the letter H. <laughs> Harry, does the name Harry mean anything? Oh, no. no. Harold. Perhaps Hay. Did hey. She, did she liked hey? to She hey. loved Hay. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, she loved she Hay. She loved Hay. She wants to thank you for feeding us so much delicious Hay oh. over the course of her long and happy life. Oh, I miss her. Uh, she misses you too. How did you outrun the Gorga? We, uh, we have faced off against one Gorga. I don't know, because they weren't alone. These, these undead monstrosities weren't alone. As I turned to run, I saw a figure in the woods. Behind these beasts, a, 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 a tall, thin man. Oh. oh, shadowy. Except for an eerie smile. I'll never forget. 
the smile I saw was the only thing I saw in the darkness. And, and, and when I saw him, I could feel him in my mind. I could feel him reading my thoughts. And, and before I set off to running, I, I just remember it left me with this profound feeling of unworthiness. The entire run home, all I felt is that he didn't want me. Like I wasn't good enough for him. It must have been my father. It must have been my father. He always said I wasn't good enough. And that I've been cursed with Jiminy! Sir, we have tasted your turnips. They are exceptional. Thank you. They're the best in a hundred miles. Your son, Jiminy. Yes. Sweet boy, just a round disaster. What happened to him that he believes he is being followed by demons? Oh. I can't control her when she's like this. You better do what she says. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was some real subtle intimidation there. That was real subtle. I was li- I was getting ready. If he didn't go up, I jumped ahead. I'm I sorry. Think- <laughs> That's definitely bottle cap. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I have been cracking up at Skid for eight years now, but I've never seen him make himself laugh as hard. I can't stop I think Asa this is at you and she's like, not yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Help. What did you Wait, say? So you're going to intimidate the good cop to your bad cop <laughs> as a strategy? She's never done this. Um, she puts her hands on his night table. Her clawed hands. Why do you not protect your son? Protect him? He's touched in the head. I can't protect him. I just keep him safe here. And when people come around, we tell him to go do a chore so he doesn't have these outbursts. We do the best we can. We're simple farm folk. We're simple turnip farmers. You think that's a good life for him? It's better than the life I had. At least I don't beat him. Did your father beat you? Yes. I deserved it. <sighs> you are a weak man. Uh, why? Because I couldn't protect Shaylin? You can't protect anyone. Oh, Shaylin, no. your wife, your son. My Do wife. you want the Gorgas to come and attack them? No, are they outside? It would be most helpful if you could tell us everything. Have you ever encountered any of these creatures before or seen this thin, slender man with the eerie smile? No, no, I, I hear stories about these creatures. There's all sorts of creatures in the wildwood. I used to have an electric fence to keep them out, but it didn't work. What others, have any other strange things happened to you in your time here? No, no, it's just simple farm folk. The boy says he sees things, but he sees lots of things. What did he say that he's seen? I don't know. He said when he was young, he had these nightmares of people coming to take him away. Devils, he called them. He's a boy. Thought he'd grow out of it. A physical. Here we are in H, and he still <laughs> believes these things. Has he ever described these devils? The giant men. I don't listen. I've got turnips to farm, wine to make. (laughs) I don't know why you think you're a bad father. You're clearly a a wonderful father. (laughs) Both to young Jiminy and to (laughs) Shailin. If only. You might be a better one if perhaps you stop self-medicating in this room. What did you say? But- I can stop anything I want! I'm wondering- (laughs) Do you remember where you... There's barely any liquor in this turnip wine! Uh... Like an apparent Member Shailen? Member Shailen and how we connected? Yes. Because I love anything you can stable. What? I just love stabling. And the lore of it all? And the lore of it all. (laughs) (laughs) And I just... Deep. Remember when we connected on that? Uh, Yes. Anyway. Um, (laughs) Deep, complex lore of stabling. Based off all that, I'm wondering, do you remember at all where 
you left, Shaylin. When you were attacked where you were? Uh, it wasn't far away from uh, where Hatria Pebblesworth was found dead. So, one more Ooh. time? Hatria Pebblesworth. Hatria? Hatria Pebblesworth! She died. I probably would have ended up like her. It's an area where people tend to die? No, no, I'm just, you asked me where Shailen was left. It was near where Hatria Pebblesworth was attacked. How did Hatria Pebblesworth die? I don't know. I just found her on the road, all shriveled up. Nothing left to her. Did you come across that before all this happened to you? Hatria, no. No, I just know it's in the same location. How far is it from here? Oh, about... Ten miles. Close, closer to town. Uh, yes, it's on the way back to town, but a different route. We would, would we have, yeah, this is me popping out of the narrative for a minute, would we have taken the road that he took here? Like, would we have found Shaylin's body if it were still there? Uh, yeah, you would have seen a mule and you did not. So he probably has his own route. Um, Do we want to go check out the body? Uh, it seems like this is a crime scene. We should probably investigate a crime scene if we're investigating a crime. Yeah, though we, I mean, we were... I know we're short on time. We're short on time. Can we see your leg? Huh? Yeah, yes. I'm a married man! Show us. (laughs) Ah. We're shaven. Shaven. We're shaven. Look away. It's hideous! And he pulls his pant leg up. And there's like the tiniest little scratch. Oh my God. It doesn't look infected or anything. Uh, Oh, can I hide it? He's like my five-year-old. <laughs> ah, does it I'll even never look walk like? Again. Does it even look like an animal did it? Like, could it just be a scratch from brush? Or it could be, um, but it you know it's a pretty long gash that's already started to heal, um, but it doesn't look. Too <laughs> so like you should be bedridden because of it. Is there a check I can do on this this feeling of unworthiness? And then he seemed like he wasn't actually attacked, and he was able to get away from the Gorgas. Which it was, sounds like the Thin Man didn't want. Didn't want yeah. him. Like, yeah. But why would they want the mule? Why indeed? Perhaps we'll find out after this break. We go into the alcove on the back wall where we just see that chronometer and the only sound left in the room is that of a ticking clock. As Talitha Buggles, Asta, and you, <laughs> and Zephyr, Zephyr. and Zephyr, and that's and you. me. Just looking at her. Eight <laughs> and eight. Uh, <laughs> some, some guy listening in his car is like me. <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, You're in the adventure too. <laughs> Zephyr, uh, grill this poor. Uh, Mentally unstable drunkard. How did we do? We cut back to oh, right. Brother Ramius ah. walking with Moira. I see you're a, a man of the cloth. Does your religion outlaw the pleasures of life? I don't understand what you mean. Oh, just uh, drinking, uh, hashish, facts. No, no, no. But in the abbey in the monastery it was not allowed as much but the religion as a whole uh, no in fact there are many different ways to enlightenment and followers of the keeper will explore many avenues explore you say <laughs> yes Ooh. it's warm <laughs> warm in here she must be like itching, she like is, the word explore she gets her is hot. Me. Thirsty. Did you say explore? It's, it's Jiminy, like Jiminy, you want to speak to, to Jiminy? Uh, uh, yes, you said you were going to see him, and I, I would love a chance to speak with him. All right, I will, uh, I'll try to calm him down, but uh, he is 
stay I understand. Here. Jiminy! Jiminy, I'm coming up for a moment. And the devil's gone! <laughs> no, they're, they're still here in one... Don't refer to us as them. <laughs> no, they're still here. <laughs> One would like to speak like, to you. Is it, is it Ace Ventura too? When he's, he's translating, he's like, they got the translator translating for him, and they're yelling at him, white devil, white devil. And the guy like translates, and he's like, did you just call me white devil? <laughs> you the translation, he's like, it's how they know you. <laughs> I had to give you a name. Quince Ocho or something. Uh, <laughs> Quince Ocho, yeah, that's right. Did you now, but over here, you called me White Devil. <laughs> Did you just call me White Devil? They know you. Um, <laughs> the devils, uh, they're not... They're, they're friends, Jiminy, and um, this man thinks he can help you. Can you just listen without screaming for one moment? All right, but I'm going to close my eyes. All right, Jiminy. She looks to you. This is... Um, what is your name again? Brother Ramius. <laughs> Ramius. Um, he's a kind man. A handsome face. Shapely thigh. And a shapely thigh. <laughs> a comely thigh. Um, well traveled buttocks. <laughs> well traveled buttocks. <laughs> she really looked at him, huh? Chris wearing very heavy robes. Chris gray eyes. Um, <laughs> just to give you a picture. Yeah. <laughs> I just you won't be looking. I would prepare you for what's about to come. It appears as if he hasn't shaved in at least six hours. He wants to speak with you. And Jiminy said, all right. <laughs> Hello? Ah! Jiminy! Sorry. Is it hot down there? Is it, is it hot downstairs? I'm here. Is that what you call it? Downstairs? Oh my god. Jiminy, I... I'm so scared. There is no need to be frightened. <laughs> I'm here to help, and I assure you I am no devil. In fact, I have made it my life's purpose to fight <gasps> devils and demons. Though I don't look it, I am a warrior, Jiminy. Fighting the very spirits that torture you. you. You fight devils? I do. Demons too? Demons too. And I know they're very scary. They scare me. Have you... Have you fought my father? Well, no, I've just met him. Not the one downstairs. My real father. Oh, well, no, not yet. And this is how I want to help you. I want to find out who your real father is and where he may be so that I can assure you he will never hurt you again. Why, why do you want to help me? Well, just close your eyes. And perhaps this will give you an idea. There is so much evil in this world, Jiminy. And only some of us, those of us that can, must band together to fight it. We must come together as one. And try to reach an enlightenment that will purge all evil forever. And he's going to cast Bless. Oh. And just start w p sending this like warm emanation of divine holy energy into the room around him and let it envelop Jiminy for a moment and it, it should feel holy to him and empowering and he can keep it going as he keeps concentrating and as he does it keeps spreading and spreading throughout the room yeah he feels you see his muscles relax and keeps his eyes closed oh feels warm it feels good doesn't it yeah. to know you are in the light can he take me when I'm in the light no, he cannot take you. Not while I am here. But I must ask you a few questions. You may become afraid, but that's okay. okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. It is only through facing this fear that we will defeat it together. When did you first... When do you first remember seeing your father? 
I was a little boy. I remember the letter G. So last, last year. year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you don't. So <laughs> Why did I say this ago. is H? What's the 13th letter of the alphabet? No, we go, they go out of order. They go out of order? <laughs> this makes it thoroughly confusing. I remember. M. <laughs> just like I said, the, the letter G. How I've longed to hear of what came after. I had to wait 10 years. H. It makes so much sense. But it was my G year. I was four. And I was lying in bed. And I heard a knocking on my window. But my bedroom's on the second floor. So I thought maybe it was just the wind, but the knocking became more insistent. And so I opened my eyes and there was a figure standing there. It didn't look like mama or papa or any person I'd ever seen. And I could feel him in my brain tell me that I was his I was his son and that one day I would inherit his kingdom and I screamed and my mama came in and lit a candle and he was gone and they said it was a bad dream. But then I kept having the dream. And the dream would happen at different times, not just at night. I'd be outside playing and I'd see my father, this thing in the woods, talking to me. What does he look like? His skin is gray and and little long he's got a long long body much taller than my dad but he doesn't look strong he's just tall and i i don't see his face i don't even see his eyes just his mouth and his mouth moves and i can hear him talking in my brain and when did he most recently visit you? After my father came back. Or... Pa. He said that... They're all gonna die. He's gonna kill them all. Did he say he would kill you? His own son. Did he say when? <laughs> I forgot. That's okay. <laughs> Jiminy, that's not going to happen. <laughs> we are going to stop him. <laughs> nothing will happen to your family. And nothing will happen to you. I assure you. Moira puts a hand on your shoulder. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. And he releases the spell, sort of, and the room becomes not quite as holy. Brother Amius says, okay, thank you for letting me speak with him. Jiminy, thank you for sharing with me. We're going to fight this together. She goes to him and says, Give me a moment. You see her like bring him over to her or his bed, kind of like lay him down and brush his hair. We go back to the room with Pa. <gasps> Anything else you want to try and get from this guy? Were you really fucking your mule? 
Yep. It's very, <laughs> is very crass way talking about what we did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why do you think <laughs> this figure would want your mule and not you? I don't know. I never thought about that. It's probably because I'm not worthy. Is there anything special or noteworthy about the place where this happens that you can think of? No. It's just a road that the farmers use. I can point you to it. Ask Moira. Uh, We can ask Moira. When did you move to this farm? This is my father's farm. You grew up here as well? I was born. In a room right next to this. Boop. Came right out. <laughs> Is there anything else strange that's happened when you were a child or over the past few years? What do you mean, strange? You said yourself you live so close to the woods. That's right. Any other incidents? Oh, it's weird stuff that goes on. Right. In the woods. Mm-hmm. That's why I drink. So I don't want to think about it. Mm. Well, that sounds you. unhealthy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. She bows. And a pleasant age to you. <laughs> <laughs> and we leave. Yeah. 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 See ya. So this is, I mean, this is really interesting. They both, both he and his son mentioned the feelings of unworthiness. But they don't talk to each other about it. No. If it's only saddest, they connected. Right. The saddest thing. <laughs> they can help each other. <laughs> the wife and the husband, no one's, no one's communicating. No, one, no one's communicating what they need. He's perpetuating yeah. his relationship that he had with his father. He's Generational trying to fight trauma. so hard against Generational it. Generational trauma. It's becoming, it's happening because he's fighting so hard against it. It's becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's sad. It also sounds like they're being haunted by Kanipo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they believe. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Brother Ramius. Hello. Oh. Oh, hey, brother. I imagine he's coming uh, downstairs as you're coming out. <laughs> Moira, okay. I love this though. Like you're talking, you over here at the end of this. Yes, yeah, they believe. Yeah. Is Moira okay? She is not well. <laughs> we should go. <laughs> Wait. You don't and, want, uh, you don't want to you stay healed? a little longer. Have you healed? And as we get going, we'll talk on the road. We need to get away from this place. We'd be welcome to, we, we'd be happy to linger so you can, Moira can have some alone time. I have yet to have a sweet tea. I hear it's popular on farms. We're running out of time. Yeah, I don't, I'd like to leave. We need to get to the Thin Farm, the Thin Lands Farms, as soon as possible. Oh. And then if we get going. We should explore the site of the. If it's on the way. If it's, yeah. It is not it's on the way. Towards town. No, it's back. It's backtracking. I don't know about this yet as Brother Ramey. We'll share with Wait, Brother Ramey. We'll tell you on the road. I can, after but, you, you know, get a little more information, I can tell you sort of where you are geographically. You still don't know do you, where it is. Do you guys want to. I think let's. I mean, I think it sounds like it was. They saw Kanipo. I, I don't think going to the place is necessarily going to help us, especially it with is, our timeline. Sure. Maybe, can we do it on the way back, though? It is interesting that Hatria Pebblesworth also died, and they found her, like, shriveled up. Yeah. Perhaps we could talk to people who knew. What, how, the selection process of... That's what I'm is, saying. Is it, what's interesting. And I, originally, I was like, oh, well, maybe they want, they're, like, taking the souls, Women? and they want the animals. Women? Female horse, female lady? Mm. Thoughts? Female mule? Question mark. Female, oh, oh, I said horse. Mule. Pardon me. <laughs> well, the mule isn't. Sorry, bug. The mule. No. Ah. The mule isn't going to be able to procreate anyway. It's a mule. Uh, so what? I mean, both. Both. People mm-hmm. that were chosen, in some way, or men. Wait, who? Bolo. Um, and oh. The son. They're both visited. Have these intense connections where it's like. You need to, you know, we are connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're formed like formed like a partnership almost in a way. Like a devil. Thing I didn't get to ask the pack. kid is like, has he asked you to do things? Yeah. That kind of stuff. Why didn't you ask that? But the mom kicked me out, and brother <laughs> Amy, this isn't. Gonna you have be no like, influence over the mom. You didn't. Brother heal? Amy, this is going to be like. You didn't heal the child. He comes down. He's 
He's sleeping now. Um, thank you. I know that was difficult, but he seemed calm because he fell asleep. If I might suggest something that may help. Do not think of this as an illusion or a delusion. Do not treat him as if he's made this up in his mind. Are you saying demons are coming to take my son? They may be. This very demon that he's identified fits the description of the creature we are searching for. This threat is very real. You must protect your family. And we are going to do our best to stop this creature from ever visiting your son again. If you believe him, if you show him you believe him, and that you will fight for him, it may help him. Was Pa helpful at all? No. Yes. Somewhat. Eh. Yeah. Me. Your jury's out. Yes. He is a sick man. Yes, it is a pre-existing condition. Hmm. I think... Perhaps you were right, Zephyr. You need to communicate more as a unit. Family is very important. Y- y- yeah. Yeah. Zephyr, you said that? That's what I said. Zephyr. You all need to talk to each other more. I heard you under your breath. I'm sorry if I... No, you're right. Yeah, maybe that is... Maybe that would help. Seems like you all are having similar, same experiences and not talking to each other about it. Not believing each other. I think we're past the point of talking. Maybe it's time Jiminy and I... Take action. Move on. Kill him? No. He'll kill <laughs> Julia goes. He'll, he'll kill action. himself eventually with the drink. Perhaps it is linked to the location, though. This close to the Wildwood. This close to the yes, I would encourage you to leave this place. No turnips are worth this. What this handsome man says is true. <laughs> then we need to leave here. Would you like the handsome man to stay and protect you? The handsome man has a name. It is lonely on the road. Where will you go next? The Thinlands. We will go to the Thinlands Farms. Thinlands Farms. And then we will return to Seb. Have you heard of it? I mean, I've heard tell. We don't do any business with them, but it is uh, far on the outskirts of the Wildwood. Indeed, we no one really goes over there. We don't have much time, which is why we are in a rush. Otherwise, we may stay longer. Are you winking? I did not wink. (laughs) If you leave this place, you should make for Seven Arches. You could stay there, and perhaps when we return, we could reunite in the city. The roads are not safe, unfortunately. But thank you. Do you have an Instagram or anything? I don't know. I don't, I don't do social media. Well, you know where I live, at least for the time being. You could leave word with the Oak Stewards if you do make it to Seven Arches. All right. Um, well, uh, thank you. Wasn't expecting this today. Um, I mean, who, who does expect a team of exorcists, therapists, cops to show up at their door every... At all. Not a cop. Not a cop. Not a cop. <laughs> Not a cop. I have a cloak. A cloak. Yes. Oh. Well, He's 13. I think I'm younger than that, actually. You've, uh, you've uplifted our life uh, in many ways. I'm not sure what to do. I need to get away from here, but I don't want to end up like Atrio, that mule. Anyhow, that's my problem, <laughs> of which I have many. Good luck. Good luck. Would you like to come with us? On your... (laughs) (laughs) Would you like to bring your charming son along with us? No, that's... that's On our entire journey. It's very kind of you, but... um, Too dangerous. Far too dangerous. I don't think that would be good for Jiminy's 
Would you like to play Moira and Jiminy throughout the next several seconds? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's mainly why I don't want to do it. We hogtie them and bring them along. I'd rather stay with my drunk, sick husband. <laughs> than have to role play. Than have to role play. <laughs> a mother and demented child. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Until I eventually kill them because I'm bored of playing them. Um, all right. Good luck to you. Very well. Bye. And you leave. And we leave. Can we do, can I do some sort of knowledge check about the uh, relation, the worthiness thing? Does that has, co- has that come up in any of our research or any of our... Yeah, you don't have to roll a check. You don't remember hearing anything about being worthy. You think back to like Bolan, his speech before he attacked you, uh, speech during the fight and things he said in the journal. You could spend some time with the journal, see yeah. if you see that, but it doesn't ring a bell. I mean, I know, but like Boan's thing, which actually turned out to be Kanipo's thing, was they wanted to bring about the destruction of all non-nature, right? There was any humans, humans, goblins in particular. Bolan did say he was chosen, you know, chosen. But is he talking about chosen to be revealed something in the gate? Chosen by something else? You know, is that was worthy from that? Chosen as a conduit for. Kanipo? Yeah, like, that's I mean, what that's I'm wondering. That's what it feels like it's common with him and the kid. Like, I, I know we told them do? to leave, Only but... I know. I I was trying to be polite. It's barred back into his room. <laughs> Just <laughs> one, more one more. One <laughs> more. <laughs> um, all right, so... But, I mean, they never described him doing anything. Right, he just thinks everyone's a horrible, kid. violent, yeah. evil. He's just so terrified all the time. It seems right? like the Gorgas are doing the dirty work. Right. Um, the Gorgas are doing the dirty work. The boy's hands are clean. He just lives in a constant fear, and his mother and father constantly tell him that his fears are in his own head. While that may be true to some extent, it does not capture the reality of the situation. This boy has been visited by Kanipo. He said he is his son. I don't know if that's a mistranslation or if this child really could be the offspring of Kanipo. We should have asked Moira what her pregnancy was like. Yeah. Yeah. Did she consume tannis root? Did she ever sleep around before marrying her? Did she ever have an affair with the Perhaps devil? With the devil. Did she accidentally take a nap in the wildwood? Or can, Stranger things have happened. Or can Kanipo take on other forms? So many questions as you leave this farmhouse. Um, you don't want to head back to town and lose time to go investigate whatever this other death was. This incredibly Shailen. important crime scene? Yeah. Okay. You don't even know where it is. Um, it's a name like Pebble. What was her name? It Pebblesworth. Was clearly made up. Yeah, on the spot. Pebblesworth. Pebblesworth. I'm glad she died. <laughs> so you're going to have to <laughs> head. One less Pebblesworth out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're going to have to head into. Never the met a Pebblesworth I liked. <laughs> you're going to have to head in the direction of the woods, and you knew that there was no place to stay. There's no inns along the road out here. You're going to have to camp out. Um, and then if you make, you know, you got a few hours before, uh, a few hours of light left, make a camp, get up, make your way to Thin Lands Farms. Yep. So you're heading sort of south, southwesterly. Eventually the sun goes down. Oh, man. Build a fire. Sit around the campfire. What's the sort of mood in the room? A little creeped out. I, creeped out. Yeah. yeah. Plus Buggles generally, has, he's never slept outside. Like he's, he's always been sort of, he's... he's lived indoors his whole life. Same with Brother Ramius. This yeah. is very unusual for him, too. Talitha is a forager. Did I tell you what? Have I told you guys this yet? I don't oh. think so. You she, picking mushrooms? I'm picking mushrooms. I can, I, I have, mechanically, I can always uh, find enough food and water to survive, and then I can roll a, a skill. I can roll a, a, a subsist roll to see if I can bring four additional creatures. That is awesome. And I also have some scouting more. Oh, wow. Da, da, da. So you found the perfect place camp out would anyone like some flay leaf <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this alone no I'll keep watch I guess I'll keep watch I could keep watch as well I'll keep watch okay 
<laughs> I dig a hole. Like so dig a, I dig a hole <laughs> and stick my head into it. I dig a hole and a then fox I, hole. I lay. Hey. I dig a hole and then I turn into a fox and then I go inside it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You see me kneel. You all see that? I put down my katana and then I just stand there and I just turn into a fox and then I go into a hole. <gasps> That's fucking cool. So you turn into like a tiny little. A fox. little white fox. Jesus. Holy Fuzzy. shit, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I poke my little fox head back out. <laughs> that is adorable and terrifying all at once. I didn't know she was like a little dog. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Buggles, you're so funny. Zephyr, so you're kind of watching the woods while he's getting high. He's scouting. She's scouting. She's popping her head out of a foxhole, and Buggles is admiring <laughs> all of this. Give me a perception check. Oh, geez. All right, here we go. This is fine. This feels- Ooh, not bad. Uh, math. 21 total. 21. It feels like a cliffy perception. <laughs> My God. Well, you leave you You're the high. Earth wall. You're so high. <laughs> you see rising out of the bushes this. an immense cliffy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, brother, <laughs> what? Like, no. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> you have very sharp senses. Archer's senses. You're watching sort of the periphery of this campsite. Imagine you scanning back and forth. And at one point you get back to a point that you just looked at. And it's so dark beyond the edge of where this campfire is. But you see... One, two, three, four, five, six large, dark pools moving towards you in the brush, moonlight reflecting off of the eyes of three gorgons. Oh, come on. And we'll see you next week. Oh, okay. Oh, Full-blown oh. combat? I don't like this Cliffy. Come on. Oh, oh beautiful. <laughs> oh, enormous Cliffy. Where's <laughs> oh, <laughs> Never visualized it. I feel, dirt, I feel dirty knowing. 